Chaudhary, the specialized and teachers, the supervisors and conduct research on international studies with special focus on Indo-Pacific region. Sir has also served as member secretary and director of the Indian Council of Social Sciences Research, uh, New Delhi, under the Ministry of Education, Government of India. Sir has also been selected as a senior advisor by the National Institute of Education Planning and Administration, New Delhi. Uh, currently, sir has uh, there as a professor in Aligarh Muslim University, and sir has published many uh, various uh, research papers to be very specific uh, in many international journals of review. And uh, sir has also sir has received his PhD from the Jawaharlal Nehru uh, University, and uh, he has received his PhD from EPSS uh, New Delhi on uh, India's ballistic missile program. He has authored uh, also authored a book on nuclear risk reduction measures in South Asia. And Sir has also contributed six book chapters, four in South Encyclopedia and and many more such things. So um, again, as I said that due to paucity of time, it's not possible to tell uh, and elucidate all the contribution which Sir has made. Uh, so with that, I would uh, welcome you, Sir. Thank you so much for joining us uh, in this FDP. Thank you so much, Sir. And I, I welcome you, Sir. Thank you. So should I start now? Okay. So good morning, all of you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tariq. Uh, thank you, Dr. Piti, and all others for inviting me. And it's nice. It's really nice to to be in uh, with the young colleagues. And you know, it's something you know uh, feels good that you know you not only speak to young colleagues, rather you speak something from your heart. Particularly when I served at the, uh, you know, in the Indian Council of Social Science Research, I I uh, knew that you know what kind of problems the researchers actually face, and what are the you know, sometimes you 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 uh, know you know you want to do something but you don't know. Uh, that we uh, what we experience in our you know uh, research time, you know we wanted many things but we didn't know anything, so you know so keeping in that in mind, so I have divided my lectures into two parts. Uh, in the first part, I'll be talking of the changing research scenario and the opportunities for funding. And in the second part, we'll be talking something very, 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 very useful, you know, how to write a research proposal. Because, you know, whenever we received research proposals in IC, SSR, sometimes there was no literature review. There was a lot of confusion about research methodology, something, you know, some, somebody was confused about, you know, bibliography. So I just want to uh, have a simple discussion on, on how to write a good research proposal. So first, let me focus on on the first lecture that is uh, changing research scenario and opportunities for funding. You know, if you look at the uh, the the uh, research environment in India or even outside, you will find that there are five major changes that is undergoing in the in the uh, research scenario. And these you can say as recent trends. You know that is that is one thing. If you look closely at the funding councils, the government priorities, the government policies and programs. So you know the first you know shift or first major trend is the change from multidisciplinary research to transdisciplinary research, right? Multidisciplinary research to transdisciplinary research. And you know earlier in 50s and 60s we talked of disciplinary research. If you are from political science or law, you thought of your discipline only. You never interacted with with the experts or researchers from other disciplines, right? In the 70s, in the 80s, we talked of interdisciplinary research: history, political science, you know, sociology, economics, geography, political science. Like so, basically, we talked about maximum, you know, our neighboring subjects, you know, uh, you know, uh, because you know, political science is. Uh, located in in social science and other social science subjects are there so basically we interacted with other disciplines but in a not in a very significant way right so that was the period of interdisciplinary research then in the in 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 90s in in early uh, you know 20 uh, you know to 2000 we we basically shifted or we basically focused on multidisciplinary research uh, inter means more than one, multi means more than two subjects, right? So that is what is called in uh, no, multidisciplinary research. 
But now the recent trend is to shift from multidisciplinary research to transdisciplinary research. And this is the priority of not only the government of India, it is the priority of almost all governments. If you uh, look at any of the funding council in the European Union, if you look at the US funding councils, if you look at the Asian funding councils, if you look at the UGC, ICSSR, ICHR, ICPR, ICMR, so whatever funding councils you would look, now basically you will find that they are focusing on a research or on a research topic that is transdisciplinary in nature. I just wanted to know what is this transdisciplinary research I'm talking about? Can anybody in one sentence explain what is this transdisciplinary research? We, we heard mostly about multidisciplinary research. I said we are now shifting from multidisciplinary to transdisciplinary. So what is this transdisciplinary research all about? Anyone just in one sentence? I'm not asking you a question. I just wanted, you know, we should start the, you know, at least I should understand where you are and where we can start. So it pertains to sir, more uh, than one uh, area of knowledge. More than one but area. That is, more than one area of knowledge that is interdisciplinary. But how it is transdisciplinary? What is this trans? Anyway, no issue. You know, when we are talking of transdisciplinary research, it refers to two things. First, we are talking of integration of knowledge. We are talking of integration of knowledge because knowledge knows no boundaries. You can't artificially divide this is history, this is law, this is political science, this is physics, this is social science, this is arts and humanities, this is medical science. So these are all artificial boundaries. And we know knowledge has no boundaries. True knowledge needs comprehensive approach, transdisciplinary approach. So when we're talking of transdisciplinary approach, we are basically referring to the abolition of all artificial boundaries. And we are talking of unity of knowledge, integration of knowledge, and when I'm talking of unity of knowledge or integration of knowledge, I'm referring to the abolition of all boundaries between social science, medical science, uh, arts and humanities, law, commerce, management, everything. So true knowledge needs no boundaries, right? In fact, true knowledge emphasizes on integration of knowledge. This is one thing. Second, when I'm talking of transdisciplinary research, I'm talking of all the theoretical developments, conceptual developments, methodological developments that is taking place in other disciplines can be useful for for our disciplines also maybe it is for social science maybe you know whatever theoretical tools and methods developed in medical science can be useful for social science maybe whatever theoretical tools and methodological instruments we are we are having in social science may be useful for natural science if i will just give one simple example to explain my position you know we are all talking of covid can you study COVID just from one disciplinary perspective or from one social science perspective? You need to have a transdisciplinary approach if you really want to study or you want to have a full knowledge or comprehensive knowledge about COVID. So when you are talking of virus, COVID as a virus, mutation of COVID virus into different you know, forms like Delta, like you know, Omicron, so many you know, varieties are there. So when you are talking of the virus, when you are talking of the infectious nature of the virus, you are talking of vaccine, you are talking of mutation, you are taking a medical approach to COVID. You are talking of medical science. These are medical issues, right? How the virus mutates itself, how, uh, you know, what, how deadly it is, and what is the kind of infections uh, people are undergoing, or, or uh, what, what is the kind of vaccine you need to uh, combat this, uh, you know, Omicron from Delta. So, you know, these are all medical issues. So you need a medical perspective to COVID. But we know medical perspective is not enough for COVID. If you really want to understand COVID, you need a comprehensive approach or transdisciplinary approach. When we're talking of COVID, you know, you need a historical approach. You need a political political approach. You need a sociological approach. You need a geographical approach. You need a psychological approach. You need, a, you know, an ethical approach. So there are so many perspectives through which you can study COVID. And, you know, when you are talking of the politics over the origin of virus, you know, how Australia, America and China fought in the WHO about the origin of the virus, about the politics behind the distribution of vaccines. 
you know most of the developed countries they have hoarded vaccines for 6 7 times and many countries in africa in asia they don't have a single dose so this is all politics how donald trump uh, lost the election to uh, joe biden because of its poor handling of covid now this is all political approach so you can't understand covid you know unless and until you focus on the political dimensions to the issue covid is also a geographical issue why many people uh, infected covid infected people in europe and america they lost their lives uh, in comparison to the people in africa and asia so what what is the why the mortality rate in 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 europe and america is much higher than than uh, the people of uh, america uh, people of asia or africa so it's a, also a geographical issue it's also a historical issue when you want to understand covid from, from the historical perspective you know you can't understand covid without understanding the spanish flu of 1918 and 1919 which infected almost 5 million people uh, 500 million people and killed 50 million people so it's a historical so unless and until you focus on the historical side of covid spanish flu you unless and until you start from spanish flu you can't understand covid in that perspective right it is also a sociological issue you talk of covid appropriate behavior social distancing you know mask uh, role of culture role of religion so this is all sociological approach you you talk of trauma you talk you talk of uh, orphan orphans uh, who no who lost their family members and became orphans you you talk of trauma you talk of psychological stress you talk of mental you know illness that is all psychological approach so if you really want to understand uh, covid from a comprehensive perspective you need a transdisciplinary approach and transdisciplinary approach as i said refers to not only the unity of knowledge combining the best elements of all the disciplines rather it needs you know tools techniques and methodological developments developed by different subjects and you pursue that you borrow that for your own subjects research investigation right so nowadays all the you know governments all funding councils all countries they are shifting from multidisciplinary approach to transdisciplinary approach because we realize that these are all artificial boundaries this is you know law law has connections with political science law has connections with management law has connections to sociology law has connection to history law has connection to so many subjects so you can you know there is a history of law there is a politics behind law there is a sociology uh, you know, sociological aspect of law so you can't understand law from law perspective only you need say you know you need a transdisciplinary approach to understand the, you know if if you really understand the true meaning of law or true meaning of commerce true meaning of management true meaning of political science true meaning of natural science right so all subjects are integrated all subjects are interrelated it is it is we who we artificially understood the the you know the boundaries between different subject actually knowledge doesn't see boundaries knowledge doesn't know boundaries or or uh, knowledge doesn't want you no know, you should understand things from bits and pieces rather you need a comprehensive approach to understand the issue same with the question of terrorism there is a sociology of terrorism there is a geography of terrorism there is a law aspect to terrorism there is a managerial issue about terrorism there is a politics behind terrorism there is a psychological aspect to terrorism there is a religion to you know the religious aspect to terrorism so you can't understand these issues from disciplinary perspective interdisciplinary perspective or multidisciplinary perspective rather you have to focus these issues or address these issues from comprehensive perspective and for that all the funding councils all the countries all the government they are focusing on transdisciplinary approach this is one major development going on in the arena of research both within the country and outside the country the second major shift is is from small data to big data small data to big data you know earlier we we focused on small data right we focused on household survey you know you have to visit uh, for your research you know you have to undertake a field trip uh, you know you have to go from household to household and collect information and maximum you know when you you have computer you use those information through excel sheet to know what is happening how it is happening so what how you collected the data so maximum you analyze those data you know in in the excel sheet in a in an ordinary computer but nowadays we are talking of big data what is this big data you know everything you now when you switch on your mobile and connect it to internet 
when you switch on your laptop or computer connect to internet you know you don't know but you generate lots of gigabytes and terabytes of data per day and that is what is called big data you know the charts you are uh, you are doing that in the social media you know your facebook post your your instagram photos your your uh, you know uh, you, you know whatever you do in youtube so whatever you know banking information whenever you go for online banking whenever you apply for government services driving license aadhar card everything you know whatever activities you do you don't know but you generate lots of gigabytes and terabytes of data and these datas are now being used by the big companies by the big corporate houses for knowing your online behavior and they target you on the basis of those online behavior you know you sometimes you uh, you know you see the youtube you you search for uh, mohammad rafi and lata mangeshkar uh, Mang mangeshkar's duet and once you finish that song you know you get lots of you know songs from the same you know pair of singers on on the on on, on the duet so how they come to know that you want um, you know so many songs of lata mangeshkar and mohammad rafi it is through artificial intelligence you know they 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 observe you they track you and they they know your test and on that basis you know all the big companies they are using your data to online you know to understand your online behavior and to understand your 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 what is your in your mind what you exactly expect how you uh, want to you know buy a thing whether you like discounts or not when they have to start the you know sale you know it is a republic day sale it is a independent day sale it is a diwali sale it is a eid sale so they are all doing this because they know that what you exactly want and and how you exactly want so nowadays earlier the research was based on small data now we are talking of big data and once uh, you know we are talking of big data you need different research tools to collect the data you need di di different analytical packages for analyzing those data and and that and those data can be used for your research and this big data cannot be studied through ordinary computers right you are we are talking of artificial intelligence we are talking of data analytics we are talking of data science so not only we are talking of big data rather we are talking of different concepts related to big data so so uh, instead of earlier sps which we uh, did for data analysis we are now talking of different statistical packages like like python like r language like panda so many statistical packages are there to analyze the big data and once you you know shift your shift you know your research focus from small data to big data so that is going to to change the arena of research in a very significant way right so this is the second change that earlier our research was based on the small data now we are shifting to big data and that in future you know I'll think of think of your research before computer and you know before computer and internet how rudimentary it was we used to type our phd thesis through manual type machines now you find you know you you, you can you know uh, uh, you know type and design your phd thesis in a very interesting way then right? that is the change and think of uh, research that has been possible because of uh, online you know searches you know you, you can know in india you, you know in one minute you know who is actually working on this topic you can collaborate you can do research you can email you can get lots of information so you know this this has become possible because of internet revolution because of it revolution so the same is going to happen in the arena of research because research and now we are talking of evidence based research we are now talking of policy based research we are talking of socially impactful research so if these ki kinds of things are there so that is going to be possible through big data and once you shift the research from small data to big data there is a lot of changes that is going to happen in the arena of data collection in the arena of data analysis and in a, in the arena of data use right so this is the second you know important change that is going to happen in the arena of research and we as researchers should be careful how you know big data is going to transform the way you thought of research the way you did research the way you collected data the way you analyze data and the way you use data right so that is the second major change that is going to take place and that is in fact it has already happened you see how you know uh, hillary clinton was defeated by 
Donald Trump through Cambridge Analytica, which got lots of his Facebook data, which was available online. And they tried to track the behavior of the American voters who were Democrats, who were Republicans, and how the Repo Republicans can vote in favor of the Democrats and how the Democrats can be changed. There's a lot of, you know, Pegasus. You know, I can know our, our Pegasus, how you know how the companies, how countries, how governments, they're using different softwares to track your behavior, where you are, you are now, where or now to whom you are talking, what kind of photos you are that is there in your mobile, so they can track your all all set of information, and this is going to happen in a very significant way. Now we have you know data protect personal data protection bill. All this you know you people are maybe you all are from law uh, background, but what I'm trying to say is you know nowadays this data. Uh, your personal information, your taste, you know, whether, uh, you know, uh, this Alexa, this uh, this Siri, you know, they, they know all about you and this can be connected to different computers to know when you started your prayer, who came to meet you, what, uh, uh, you know, what you took in the breakfast, where you are going, what, what time of, you know, what, 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 what is the time you spend with your family? Everything, all your activities are tracked. All your activities are 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 uh, recorded, and these can be analyzed to know what you want, what you don't want. When you uh, you know want to buy some items, when you uh, you know when you are going outside your house, when you are going for prayer. So every all sorts of information are collected, recorded, analyzed, studied to know you. And this is what is going to transform the way we did research or the way we thought of research. So this was the second major shift. The third is, you know, the, the change in the research agenda. The third is the change in the research agenda. You know, earlier the research agenda was different. Now we are thinking of a different research agenda. You know, earlier we thought it is because, you know, there's a lot of changes that has un, un, undergone. You know, we, we find that the country, our country is undergoing tremendous changes. And because of that, there's a lot of change in the research agenda. So our research agenda at present is very different. What what was the research agenda ten years ago or twenty years ago? I'm just giving a small examples. You know, earlier we thought of India as a as a developing country, as a poor country, as a backward country, as a snake charming country. So that was the impression internationally, both within India and outside India. We had a very negative view of India. You know, almost all countries thought that India. You know. It's a country of global south. You know, it's a poor country. It's a developing country. It's a backward country. It's a uh, it's 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 a, it's a, a poor country. It's a it's a illiterate country. So many negative issues were associated with. It. But how you you understand India now? How you look at India now? And what how other countries also look at India now? India is now understood as the fifth largest economy of the world, having three trillion US dollars of GDP. India is considered as the third largest economy of Asia after China and Japan. India is considered as a counterweight to China. India is considered as the fastest growing economy. So these things have changed the perception about India and, and others' perception about India. And that is how there is a change in the research agenda. Now we never thought of demanding a permanent seat in the UN Security Council. We are now demanding. We want to be a member of uh, UN Security Council. We are demanding is, is an increase in the voting share of India in the IMF and World Bank. We are demanding because we are contributing more. We are we are now looking at Africa in a more closed way. We are now look, thinking of Latin America. We are thinking of West Asia. We are thinking of you know uh, a, a place in the in the in the uh, uh, I mean Britain would system or in the UN Security Council or we are demanding a larger share in global negotiations. There are global issues like climate change. You know there are issues like global commons, and we are demanding a major role in that. And whatever international negotiations are going on now, you everybody is looking at India, its position, its posture, whether India will say yes, India will say no. Why this change is there? It is because all because there is a change in the perception about India internationally, and we are also looking at India in a very different way. Now we are we are thinking of you know smart cities. Earlier we thought of 
pollution, congestion, you know, overpopulation, uh, malnutrition, non-employment, poverty, all this. Now we're talking of different issues. We're talking of small smart cities. We're talking of smart governance. We're talking of smart power. We're demanding a major, you know, a permanent seat on UN Security Council. We are, we are looking at Latin America. We are thinking of a better relationship with America in equal terms. Right? So, you know, we are, we are now thinking of empowerment. We are not, you know, it, it is not the fact that I'm not saying that, you know, all issues have become, uh, or they have been resolved or these issues are not there, but we are le looking at those issues from a comprehensive perspective or what I say, transdisciplinary perspective. We are, we are talking of urbanization, we are talking of pollution, we are talking of industrialization, but we are integrating all these issues with smart city concept. In smart city, we are not only talking of urbanization, we are talking of urban planning, we are talking of you know uh, urban governance, we are talking of uh, smart delivery of government services, we are talking of you know uh, architectural development of the city, we are talking of uh, retaining the global heritage. So you know all concepts are integrated with this smart city concept. So we are looking at the problem from a very comprehensive perspective, not only individually, you know, pollution, congestion, all this. We are not looking individually. Rather, we are tying, tying off these issues and looking at these issues in a very comprehensive way. So we are talking of clean drinking water. We are talking, we, are, we have widened the definition of poverty. Right? We are looking at issues from a new perspective, from a develop, you know, from a from a perspective, you know, that is more oriented towards the people, more, you know, it gives more voices to the people. So we are looking at a different research agenda. And that's why almost all funding councils, they are encouraging research uh, projects on, on new topics, on artificial intelligence, on big data, on clean drinking water, on cheap electricity, you know, so these are all issues, you know, cleaning the river resources, you know, river systems of India. So these are all issues that needs the use of technology and solution from a time bound manner. And that is why the focus of the government has changed from the traditional research agenda to the, you know, new issues, the emerging issues, critical issues. And we are talking of, uh, you know, uh, you know, these issues from a comprehensive perspective. So this is the third major change you will find that from traditional research agenda, we talked of village panchayat, you know, rural development, this poverty, malnutrition, this issue that now we are looking those issues in a, in a very different way. And that is how our research agenda has changed. And almost all government, uh, you know, projects, almost all uh, departments, government departments, almost all funding councils, they are now inviting research proposals on these issues that will really add to the government policy making that will have a social impact and and that will be uh, you know helpful in 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 the to the government in achieving its objective so basically we are talking of practical solution to the to the to these problems maybe social solution maybe political solution maybe economic solution so we are looking at a different research agenda and that is the third change that you can find in there in our research the fourth change is it's, it's basically you will find that earlier we talked of teaching. Earlier our focus was teaching. Nowadays we are not only talking of teaching, we are talking of research. Both teaching and research. When you are in a college, you are in a university, everybody expected you that you should take your five classes, four classes, three classes daily. If you do research, it's fine. If you don't do, still it is fine. But nowadays see the change. Now you are not only supposed to teach, you are also supposed to do research and substantial research. And we are also asked whether that research paper is published or not. And if it is published, whether it is listed in the, you know, it is published in the UGC listed journal or it is Scopus index journal. What is the impact factor of that journal? Whether it is peer reviewed or not. And, you know, how you are encouraged for research, you know, you are encouraged or you are pressurized what you can say. It, it, it is up to you, but you are supposed to do research and you in that way, you know, there is, there is APA. What is this whole concept of API? Academic performance indicators. This is all because you, everybody is supposed to do research. And if you are poor in research, you will not be promoted. If you are an assistant professor, 
First of all, you will, if you have no publications, you, you know, you, if you have no significant research contribution, you will, it's very difficult for you to get an appointment as an assistant professor. So you have to prove yourself that you are not only good in your subject, rather you have made some contribution, some positive contribution by way of research. So that is one thing. Second, you know, you have to, uh, uh, you know, the, the most importantly, you know, you, for when we're talking of API, you know, you have to supervise PhDs, you have to publish papers, you have to present papers in uh, national and international seminars, you know, you have to publish books, you have to publish book chapters, you have to write for, you know, online courses as, uh, as, uh, as recommended by the UGC. So these are all, you know, on the basis of which you are evaluated. So you are evaluated, you know, if you have 300 points, API points, you will be promoted as, a, as an associate professor. If you have 400 points, you will be promoted as a professor. I'm not saying, you, you know, you may debate with me or you may disagree with me that these are needed, these are not needed, this is right, this is wrong. I'm not saying that, but what I'm trying to say is now these have become compulsory in teaching. If you want to come in the arena of research or teaching, so you have to follow the UGC guidelines and, you know, unless and until you have this, you will, you will not be promoted. So in that way, the, the government, the, uh, the funding councils, they are pressurizing you to have some contribution for research, right? And in the same way, your college, your university, your research uh, institution, is also evaluated for their research performance. You know, what is this NAC all about? NAC is evaluating, it is giving you grades on the basis of your everything, including research contribution, right? Your universities are evaluated, you know, this NIRF ranking by the Ministry of Education, NAC ranking, Times of India ranking, India Today ranking, uh, you know, not only you are ranked domestically, internationally, you are also ranked, you know, Times Higher Education, QS ranking, this ranking, that ranking, why this ranking is done? This ranking is done to, and, and basically this ranking is done to assess your everything, including the major parameter is research. What is your research contribution? If one faculty from one college publishes a good research paper in a Scopus index journal, that will change the college ranking. One paper can significantly change the college ranking. And the, if many of the faculties publish good research papers in different journals, you know, that will change the university ranking. And all faculties from the country will publish, that will change the country's ranking. You know, now countries are ranked, uh, how, what is the India's rank in social science research in the world? What is India's rank in the management? What is India's rank in the law? What is India's rank in natural sciences? What is India's rank in social science? So what I'm trying to say is now this ranking has become a business also. And this all you know so you are you are not only supposed to be a good teacher rather you are also supposed to be a good researcher and this is why you know this is this is a major change that the government is spending a lot of money on on, on research and it is you know all the, this is this is for all you know you have ugc care list you have scopus index journals you have nac ranking you have nirf ranking you have so many things so the, this is the major change that instead of only teaching, now you are encouraged to indulge both in teaching and research, and research has become a parameter for ranking. And when there is a ranking, there is a lot of competition between universities, there is a lot of competition uh, between research institutions, and, and you get good faculties, you know, you get good applicants as faculties, because if you have good ranking, so many people will try to join uh, as your faculty. You will get good students, and you will get, get funding, liberal funding from the government, and also you will get what is called graded autonomy. You get graded autonomy from the ministry, you get liberal funding from the funding councils, you you know, sometimes, you know, for, for applying for ICSR research project, we ask what is your NIRF ranking? You got my point. So all these things are now encouraged to, to, to motivate you, to encourage you, or you can say to force you to do research because research is not only important for just finding solutions to the day-to-day -day problems, rather research is also needed uh, to get good ranks for your college, for your universities, and for your country, right? The last major change, what is happening in the arena of research is, you know, instead of the earlier emphasis on time-bound spending of money, earlier we were expected in funding councils, in universities, we are all expected to spend the money by 31st March. But nowadays, you not only are supposed to spend the money by 31st March, rather you have to spend the money in a way that is, what is the outcome of that, you know, spending? 
now who got the benefit out of that spending are you doing research just for your api points or are you doing research whose findings are important for the societal development for the policy making for for anything so basically you know what if, if you are doing phd what is the output of your phd how many research papers you publish from that phd thesis or during that phd what is the what is the output what is the outcome of that research what is the impact factor where you published your research papers where you pay, you know presented your paper is, is it in national seminar or international seminar these are all become ugc rules now you know two papers you have to publish during your phd two papers you have to present in you know in national and international seminar so these are all the important conditions why you know all funding councils all you know government bodies they are making it compulsory for you to to do research because nowadays research we have not only to do for just you know getting good ranks rather we have to do for finding out solutions for our day to day problems for societal problems so this is how the research environment is changing it's not that it is only happening in india you will find these kind of changes in all countries all continents and once you understand these kind of changes then it becomes easy for you to know what are the funding opportunities and how can you get best use of that or how you can get the best benefits out of that funding opportunity i hope you know you understood those five changes any confusion any doubt uh, then i will shift to the other part of my lecture that is about the funding samajh mein aa raha hai na subah subah tha thand mein pareshan ho gaye ki subah subah sunna pad raha hai hmm Uh, Dr. Puvi, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Good morning, sir. Uh, sir, my question is: While you were talking about transdisciplinary approach, is it uh, that we need to collaborate with other people from different, uh, you know, uh, specializations to be able to uh, write that particular piece of paper that we are writing, or we independently have to get into the roles of other uh, domains? I how how do you suggest it yes i got your question when i'm talking of transdisciplinary research i'm not just talking of writing a paper you got me but i'm talking of doing research from a transdisciplinary perspective suppose you want to write a, a research paper on covid for example right so you know there are some issues that that can be well researched by the medical science people and if you uh, write a paper or do a research on a topic that such as covid or terrorism i had given two examples you know medical aspects cannot be studied by you or investigated by you so and and you know these are the topics that need a comprehensive approach because you need a social science approach you need a, a law perspective you may need a medical science perspective so when you combine all these perspectives that will give a complete understanding of the issues uh, uh, that you are investigating so it's not a question of writing a paper you know nowadays topics are such that you need a comprehensive approach you know you can't understand i don't think you know if you know we, you know if you want to have a uh, you know right kind of strategy for combating covid do you think that government should constitute a team of uh, you know experts only from science background they need people from social science background they need experts from natural science background they need experts from from uh, medical science background so then only government can have a comprehensive approach to combat covid so you 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 may see you may check the cv of all the experts who are in the government of india team which is looking at appropriate response for covid because you need different approach and government has realized and we have to realize that also as a researcher so that's why all funding councils are encouraged you know you you can write a good research you know is it this is also important that how you are writing who are the authors of the paper if you have a american author along with the indian author so that is called international collaborative research and this is also important for getting good ranks by the university by the foreign funding councils right so how you write a paper how you do research on what topic you do research what is your i am not say, saying that for writing all papers you need international collaborators or you need transdisciplinary approach but i am saying that we are now you know because of the nature of the issues involved we are now shifting from multidisciplinary to transdisciplinary approach thank you sir i think question or we can skip now and we will focus first on funding and then once i you know uh, i i reach at my at the end of my lecture we can have some time for discussion 
right i just finished first half of my lecture and i just wanted your feedback whether you understood what i said or not that was my question yeah sabhi ko samajh mein aaya kisi ko koi problem hai koi point samajh mein nahi hai to you can say me and i will discuss that again but sabko samajh mein aaya so participants are getting your point they are writing in the chat box yeah yes sir yes sir i can see but you know it would kuch log aur video ko unmute karo na kyunki uh, computer screen ko dekh ke padhane ka mann nahi karta you got my point some i would suggest some of the participants to unmute their video so that you know you can see me i can see you and then we can have a lively discussion okay so anyway i just you know i just told you the the major changes what is undergoing in the arena of research now i will focus in the light of this background what are the funding opportunities you can apply as a faculty as a researcher from different funding agencies but i will mainly focus on icssr where i work and where i have the first hand experience right if you are a faculty or a researcher you know there are different funding opportunities in funding councils like icssr where you can apply and get the benefit you know the first is the research project right so first funding opportunity you can apply for icsr is the research project and research projects given by the icsr are of four types char prakar ka research project hai right first is called minor project second is called major project third is called collaborative project and the fourth is called international collaborative project right so there are four types of research projects you can apply to icsr as a faculty as a researcher right so that you can do so my what is a minor project you know if you are applying for a, a grant of less than 5 lakh rupees and you want to write a research paper or something like that so and you want to finish that within a year years time so that is called a minor project 5 lakh ek saal mein khatam so study has to be completed in within a year and the budget is less than 5 lakhs this is called minor project by icssr if your budget requirement is more than 5 lakhs but less than 15 lakhs and the time uh, you need to complete the studies is 24 months or 2 years then it is a major project right two things studies to be completed within 2 years and the budget requirement is up to 15 lakhs 15 lakh 26 mahina mein study aapko pura karna hai right third is called collaborative project where you need a team of researchers i say transdisciplinary approach so you need a team of researchers from different subject background and study on a topic that is transdisciplinary in nature and this has to be finished within 2 years with a budget up to 50 lakhs rupees 50 lakh tak team of researchers 2 saal mein pura karoge that is what is called collaborative research project the fourth is called international collaborative research project where you need a team of researchers from different countries with whom icsr has a tie off with whom icsr has a tie off and indian researchers and foreign researchers they will collaborate on a topic that uh, you know the the budget is up to 2 crores rupees 2 crore tak budget mein 36 months ke andar आपको खत्म करनी है दैट इज कॉल्ड इंटरनेशनल कोलाबरेटिव रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट सो हाउ मेनी रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट आर देयर फोर माइनर प्रोजेक्ट ड्यूरेशन वन ईयर बजेट फाइव लाख रुपीज मेजर प्रोजेक्ट ड्यूरेशन टू इयर्स बजेट पंद्रह लाख कोलाबरेटिव दो साल में पचास लाख इंटरनेशनल कोलाबरेटिव दो तीन साल में दो करोड़ अप टू टू करोड़ रुपीज सो आई सी सर स्पेंड्स हाफ यू नो ऑलमोस्ट ए क्वार्टर ऑफ इट्स बजट ऑन रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड यू नो फॉर द फर्स्ट टू रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट्स माइनर एंड मेजर यू कैन इंडिविजुअली अप्लाई राइट बट फॉर कोलाबरेटिव प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड इंटरनेशनल कोलाबरेटिव प्रोजेक्ट्स यू नीड ए टीम ऑफ रिसर्चर्स एंड द टॉपिक मस्ट बी ट्रांस डिसिप्लिन इन नेचर ईच ईयर आई सी सर एडवर्टाइजेस इन मे जून for this research project so once in a year icsr advertises for this research projects so you can apply you know during those period right but you know for international collaborative project there is a cyclic process 
sometimes you know with the european union icsr may advertise in february in with thailand you know icsr has a tie up with 14 countries and with those 14 countries icsr expects that you, you know select a researcher from foreign countries to 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 work on a topic that is you know transdisciplinary in nature and the budget is you know 2 crore rupees and the duration is 36 months right so these are the you know and and one uh, other thing i just wanted to add you know in addition to uh, the, this you know minor project and major project which you can do independently as a single researcher but for collaborative and international collaborative research project you need a team of researcher but for all research project you must be a phd there is no age limit you can apply anytime you like if you are a faculty you can apply up to up to you are not up you know you, you you are alive right so there is no it you know you are you can apply as a retired faculty you can apply as a you know serving faculty but you know there is no age limit maximum age limit uh, but one thing is clear that you, for all these research project you need to have a phd right and if the co-investigator has no phd that is okay but you you know he should have or she should have some significant publication in the area of uh, the, the topic in which you are doing research or you are proposing for research right so the first funding from icsr is about research projects and this research project as i said it is advertised once in a year and if you are interested you know uh, uh, you know uh, you can now start preparing for your research proposal and in may june when there is an advertisement you can apply and get the benefit right this is one funding the second is important you know the second important funding is what is called fellowship different types of fellowship right at present icsr gives four types of fellowship four types of fellowship one fellowship is called doctoral fellowship the second is called post doctoral fellowship third is called senior fellowship the fourth is called national fellowship right so like research project icsr gives four kinds of fellowship right the first starts with doctoral fellowship doctoral fellowship is of four types doctoral fellowship is of Put, I will cross question these things to you. Once I finish a point, I will cross question so that I will, you know, I will come to know that whether you really understood what I said or you are just saying yes, 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 and, and nothing more than that. So, you know, there are four types of doctoral fellowship. One is called centrally sponsored doctoral fellowship. The second is called short term doctoral fellowship. The third is called contingency grant. And the fourth is called institutional doctoral fellowship. Right. So how many doctoral fellowships are there? Four. Centrally sponsored doctoral fellowship, short term doctoral fellowship, contingency grant and institutional doctoral fellowship. First, these three fellowships, you know, the centrally sponsored doctoral fellowship, the, the uh, contingency grant and the short term doctoral fellowship are given by the ICSR headquarter located in New Delhi right the uh, the centrally sponsored doctoral fellowship is given for two years the centrally sponsored doctoral fellowship is given for two years and the monthly you know scholarship is 21000 per month plus 20000 as contingency right so those who are applying for icsr doctoral fellowship they will get a scholarship of 21000 rupees per month and plus 20000 as contingency this is for two years right there is no written examination for that the, the selection is basically made on the basis of your doctoral synopsis right so whatever doctoral synopsis you you submit to your university you you will just send that uh, to ISSR for evaluation and on that basis you are selected for your doctoral fellowship right see this is the first doctoral fellowship the second is called short term doctoral fellowship where you get six months scholarship with six uh, months contingency right so you you get when you are in the advanced stage of your research you get six months scholarship along with six months contingency basically this is given to a student or a doctoral uh, scholar who is in the advanced stage of his research the third is called what is what is called a contingency grant where you get lump sum fifty thousand rupees for typing binding and stationary related expenses of your phd thesis when you are about to submit your phd thesis when you are about to submit your phd thesis right so this you know centrally sponsored doctoral fellowship short term doctoral fellowship and contingency grant are given directly by the icsr headquarter there is no written test you know you will be basically evaluated on the basis of your doctoral synopsis so that is all about this first three doctoral 
uh, fellowship. In addition to these three types of doctoral fellowship, you know, ICSR gives also uh, another fellowship called Institutional Doctoral Fellowship. ICSR has a tie-up with, you know, ICSR has 24 research institutes throughout the country, and these research institutes are located in different states of India. And if you just want more about this doctoral fellowship, you can just, or, or, or these uh, research institutes, you can just web, you know, log in to ICSR website at www.icsr.org to find out the name of these research institutes. But these research institutes are ICSR research institutes. They are located in different parts of the country. And, you know, you, 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 whenever you apply for a doctoral fellowship, these, uh, you know, institutions, they also grant doctoral fellowship. The amount is given by the ICSR, but the selection is made by these people. The selection is made by these people. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, the, these institutional fellowships are not directly given by the ICSR. The selection is made by the uh, uh, ICSR research institutes, but the funding is given by the ICSSR. So the age limit is 40 for general caste. Five-year relaxation is for ACST candidates. And, you know, uh, uh, there is only one time, you know, the advertisement is made. It is, this, it, it is in the month of June, July. So in case you, you have already done your PhD, this is fine. But if you know someone who is really interested for this uh, scholarship or any of your students who is doing PhD under you and he or she wants to, uh, you know, do doctoral research, so you can recommend this fellowship for him. And for knowing more about this fellowship, you can suggest him or her to visit ICSR website, right? So how many doctoral fellowships are given? There are four of them. Four. First, it's called? The Central Short-Term Contingency Grant and Institution. No, centrally sponsored doctoral fellowship given for two years. Scholarship amount is 21,000 and contingency is 20,000. Right. Second is called short term doctoral fellowship. When you are in the advanced stage of your research about to submit your PhD thesis, you may you have not got any fellowship from anywhere. You may apply for this fellowship that is called short term doctoral fellowship given for six months with a contingency of six months. Right. So this is the second type of doctoral fellowship given by the ISSR for those who are in the advanced stage of their PhD. The third is called contingency grant, where you get a lump sum rupees of 50,000 from ICSR for submitting your PhD thesis for meeting your stationary typing, binding, and you know short field trip digit expenses, right? So this is. The fourth is called institutional doctoral fellowship, which is given by the 24 research institutes of ICSR located in different parts of the country. Here, the fellowship amount is same, duration is same. The only difference is Money is given by the ICSR, selection is made by these institutes, right? Right. So in case you want to do PhD in those research institutes, you can also apply for uh, a doctoral fellowship here. The selection they will make and the money will be given by the ICSR. So these are the four types of doctoral fellowship. Only once there is an advertisement in the month of May, June, there is an advertisement. If you are interested to apply for this, you can apply. If you know someone who is interested for this fellowship, you can suggest or you can share this information with them, right? So this is the second, you know, this is the first uh, kind of fellowship that is called doctoral. The second is called postdoctoral fellowship. You are, if you are an assistant professor in a college or university, you can apply for the postdoctoral fellowship of ICSSR, right? The age limit is 45 for general caste, five-year relaxation for ACST candidates, right? Those who are employed, they will get their pay protection benefit, but for this, you have to meet three important criteria. First, first criteria is you must be regularly appointed. You are a regular appointee. Those who are contractual employees, those who are guest faculties, those who are ad hoc employees, they will not get, get pay protection benefit. So this is the first condition that in case you want to uh, do postdoctoral research, so you can do this uh, for two periods period of time. But you know, for pay protection, you have to be a regular faculty number one. Second, you must be a UGC. You know, uh, you must be drawing UGC pay scale, right? You must be drawing UGC pay scale. Those who are getting less salary than the UGC pay scale or more salary than the UGC pay scale, their pay will not be protected. Third, you must be eligible for leave. 
you must be eligible for leave those who are in probation those college or universities they they, they don't relieve the candidate for doing research so they will not be eligible for issr uh, pay protection because it's a full time research position and here all your pay all your allowances all your increments all your seniority everything is protected as per the ugc rule as per the government of india rule right so you don't lose anything rather once you you are an assistant professor suppose you are fed up with teaching you need a break you need a research break and you can just do pdf in any university in india within india for a period of 2 years and for these 2 years your pay will be protected and you lose nothing rather your these 2 years research experience will be counted for your promotion as an associate professor so for associate professor you need 5 years of experience if you have three years of teaching experience and two years issr pdf experience you will be promoted you are eligible for being promoted as associate professor right this scholarship is 31000 per month plus contingency of 25000 rupees right this is for unemployed students right and those who are employed they will get full contingency along with full pay if it is uh, 30 lakhs if it is 40 lakhs if it is 50 lakhs you will get all your pay by the issr as per the government of india rules right as i said there is only once once there is an advertisement that is in the month of may june sometimes it goes to july right and you know uh, for this you 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 raise should not be more than 45 and five year relaxation is given to scst candidates right and issr grants 500 doctoral fellowship per year and 300 post doctoral fellowship per year right the maximum limit of giving post doctoral fellowship each year by the issr is 300 from different disciplines you know interdisciplinary disciplines you know medical science people you know natural science people in you know, a social science people. so so there is a myth that issr only gives for social science subject people but this is a myth right the reality is if you are doing interdisciplinary research multidisciplinary research or transdisciplinary research you can apply and get the benefit even if you are not from social science background right and law the commerce they are also a part of social science subject as per the iccsr right so the third fellowship is called senior research fellowship the third fellowship is called senior research fellowship if you are a you are an associate professor in a college or university right How, you know uh, let me just clarify that you know iccr doesn't discriminate it is a private university or a public funded university there are four types of universities in india central university state university deemed to be university and private universities all are eligible for iccr fellowships and research projects even you know all sort of funding what i am going to discuss so all you know faculties working as associate professor in a college or university maybe it is a private university maybe it is a public funded university they are all eligible to apply for iccr senior fellowship this senior fellowship is given for two years those who are employed they will get their uh, get their pay protected right and those who are not employed they will get a scholarship of 45000 rupees per month and 40000 as contingency right so 45000 per month for unemployed uh, scholars and 40000 as contingency for employed and unemployed scholars so those who are uh, appointed uh, in in the regular pay scale uh, eligible for leave and they are drawing ugc pay scale so those who are associate professors they can think of this iccr senior research fellowship which is about 100 iccr you know 100 fellowships are given each year by the iccr for senior fellowship category right so this is a good break for those who are mid career professionals at least those who are associate professors and above right the fourth fellowship is called senior uh, fourth fellowship is called national fellowship this is at par with ugc professor emeritus what ugc calls professor emeritus iccr calls you, uh, you know national fellows and those you know who are you know at the end plug end of their career those who are retired so basically they can apply for this fellowship but the minimum age uh, for this fellowship is after 70 because the age limit for senior fellowship is from 45 to 70 so senior fellowship people can apply from 45 to 70 and national fellowship you can apply after 70 but mostly when you are retired so you can apply for this fellowship this is 
called uh, national fellowship what ugc calls professor emeritus right and you know in this fellowship you get 55000 as as scholarship and 50000 as contingency this is in addition to your pension so whatever pension you are drawing that you must be getting no problem but in addition to that pension you can also get a scholarship from the ICSR and this is a very prestigious scholarship right so these are the four types of fellowships given by the ICSR you know uh, for 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 researchers working in colleges working in universities working in private universities working in deemed universities whatever you know that is not important so it is important that you apply for this fellowship right and these fellowships are given once in a year so you have to uh, regularly uh, visit the ICSR web page for for detailed information, whatever I'm saying, that is the, just a little bit of information, regular, you know, all details, all advertisements, you know, that you can you can find out from ICSR website, right? The th uh, so is that this scholarship portion is over and is that clear to everyone? If you have any question, we, we will have some time for discussion, right? The third funding opportunity is called International Travel Grant, International Travel Grant right this is of three types international travel grant this is of three types first grant is given for presenting papers in international seminars that is called international seminar grant right so if you are interested to present a paper in any international seminar outside india you can apply for this fellowship and here you get all the expenses covered you know your airfare your lodging boarding expenses your registration your visa fee your insurance your local convenience everything is covered under the ICSR grant so you can apply for this there is no time limit to apply you can apply anytime you like but at least whenever you are you know you plan for the seminar you should apply before three months of your actual visit right so you should apply for this seminar grant before three months of your actual visit so all expenses are covered. So uh, if you are a faculty, you can apply. If you are a student, particularly for PhD uh, and above, you know, PhD scholar and above, they can also apply. But this is a very popular grant. And once you are given, you will not apply again for this grant for three years. So in three years, you'll be given once this fellowship, right? So uh, basically, you know, you know, if you are interested to present a paper in any international seminar, this is a good scheme for you right as a faculty as a researcher you can apply for this grant there is no time limit you know you have to apply online and you know you have to give your complete paper which you are going to present along with the abstract a tentative budget and the conference brochure that gives lots of you know basically information about the seminar date registration fee where it is conducted who is conducting that so conference brochure complete paper abstract and a tentative budget all you have to submit at a you know at, you know uh, at once to icsr but before three months of your actual visit right because that is the selection period icsr takes for deciding whether it will sponsor your trip or not right the second is called data collection grant the second is called data collection grant if you are doing a research on a topic for which you need to go to a foreign country to collect data you can apply for data collection grant there is no time limit to apply for this grant. You can apply anytime you like, but at least you should apply before three months of your actual uh, visit to the foreign country, right? Uh, a PhD student can apply, a PDF student can apply, a researcher can apply, a faculty can apply, anybody can apply. And there is no uh, difference that you should be in a private university, in a government university, in a central, anybody who is serving in any, any Indian college or university recognized by the UGC is eligible to apply for data collection grant or any of ICSR grants, right? And, and you know, you get everything, uh, minimum 15 days to one month, you have to stay in, the, in a foreign country to collect the data, right? And for this, you have to, uh, you know, uh, get a invitation letter from the foreign institution or university where you are going to visit, Right. Along with that, you have to give a research plan. What is your plan? Whom you are you want to meet? Whom you want to inter interview? Where you will get the data? Whether you have the permission to access the data? So all these things you have to mention in the ICSR application form. And as I said, you have to apply three months before the actual visit. So this is an important grant for uh, you know getting data from a foreign country from 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 a country outside India. Right. Uh, the third is called uh, you know 
कल्चरल एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम तो थर्ड इंटरनेशनल ग्रांट इज कॉल्ड कल्चरल एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम आईसीसर हाज ए बायोलैटरल रिसर्च एग्रीमेंट विथ फोर्टीन कंट्रीज लाइक यू नो यूरोपियन यूनियन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स जापान साउथ कोरिया साउथ अफ्रीका थाईलैंड यू नो चाइना रशिया यू नो श्रीलंका सो मेनी कंट्रीज आईसीसर हेज बायोलैटरल रिसर्च एग्रीमेंट and as i said in case you want to visit any of these countries for research purposes for presenting a paper for giving a lecture for interacting with the faculty for collecting research material for joint publication whatever research purpose you select to go to these countries you know you can go to those countries up to 3 months right up to 3 months you can stay in those countries and you know you will get full grant from the issr that will cover all your expenses so for research you know for data you know uh, basically for international seminar you can go maximum for a week for data collection you can go maximum for a month and for cultural exchange program you can go maximum for 3 months right and these are you know for first and second there is no advertisement you can apply any time you like but the third for the cultural exchange program there is an advertisement and whenever there is an advertisement you are supposed to uh, you know apply during that time only now suppose india has a collaboration with japan so japan government and indian government will advertise uh, uh, at a time and whenever you are interested to visit japan you have to respond to that advertisement along with all the necessary enclosures as i said you know at an online application form your tentative research plan what exactly you want to uh, 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 visit where you want to stay how much money you exactly need so everything you know you have to give detail information to issr and after that there will be a selection committee and that will decide whether your application is worth uh, you know consideration for or you will be selected or not right so this is called international collaboration grant consisting of three things grant for in paper presentation in international seminar data collection grant and cultural exchange program right third this is the third grant after research project and scholarship the fourth is called seminar grant if you want to conduct a seminar in your college or university you can apply for funding from issr and if it is a national seminar issr gives 3 lakhs rupees and if it is an international seminar issr gives 5 lakh rupees 3 lakh national seminar ke liye 5 lakh international seminar ke liye so these grants are given by the issr to any faculty any researcher working in a college university or research institute right there is no timeline any time you apply but you should apply before 3 months of the actual seminar 3 mahina pehle aapko apply karna hai there is an online application you should write a theme paper and you know a concept note what we call for seminars and who are the participants who are you know What, you know what is the duration of the seminar so if it is one day two day three day you have to mention that and if it is a national seminar or international seminar you have to also mention that along with a tentative budget and who others are also funding it or not whether you are applying to issr only for funding or not so all these informations you are supposed to give to the issr and there is no time limit and you know you can apply any time you like but at least send your application before 3 months of the actual seminar because that is the processing time required for selection by the icssr right the next is called training and capacity building program the next is called training and capacity building program what is that you know if you want to organize a training program like this right suppose you 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 organize this faculty development program so this is called training and capacity program by the icssr and if you want to organize a in a 10 days research methodology course for phd students of your university or for the entire country you can organize such a program and for that 10 days program for phd students or phd pdf and other research students issr gives 5.5 lakh rupees for conducting such a program right for for conducting a research methodology program for the researchers issr gives 5.5 lakh rupees for 10 days program and for assistant professors faculty development program issr gives 8 lakh rupees for 12 days right for for improving their methodological skills for improving their writing skills for improving their research skills so whatever uh, purpose uh, it is there but issr gives 
you know, a grant for the faculty development program for uh, 12 days and the budget is 8 lakh rupees. So here the participants are not supposed to pay anything. So all the money, all the expenses, all the expenditure are covered or drawn by the ICSSR, right? 10 days for PhD students, 12 days for faculties. Budget is 5.5 lakh for 10 days program, 8 lakh for 12 days program, right? So this is another you know, popular grant given by the ICSSR for faculty development program for, for improving the writing and methodological skills of the researchers, right? The last funding opportunity is called publication grant. The last funding opportunity is called publication grant. If you want to publish your PhD thesis as a book, if you want to publish your PhD uh, thesis or if you want to publish your PDF report, senior fellowship report, research project report, seminar proceedings, conference proceedings, or you just want to write, independently do some research and publish it as a book form, ICSR gives 50,000 rupees, lump sum 50,000 rupees to the publisher to publish your book as a research book, not a textbook, right? The only condition is you should write a research book, reference book, not a textbook, right? ICSR gives, in addition to this 50,000 rupees, all world-class publishing houses are in the impanel list of ICSR and they are Oxford, they are Sage, there is Rutledge, there is Cambridge University Press, all world-class publishing houses are in the ICSR impanel list. So ICSR will send your manuscript to this one of these publishers to have their review. And if they say yes, ICSR will subsidize your publication expenses by giving 50,000 lump sum rupees to that publisher. So you get your work published as a book and you get also good publishing houses to publish your work, right? And this is an important grant by the ICSR. So you can th publish your PhD thesis, you can publish your, your uh, you know, uh, senior research fellowship report, PDF report, you can publish your conference proceedings, you can publish your seminar proceedings, so whatever you like, but that must be a reference book, not a textbook, right? So these are the funding opportunities available. One is given for research project, one is given for scholarship, one is given for uh, presenting paper in international seminar, one is given for collecting data, one is given for cultural exchange program, one is given for conducting a seminar in your college or university, one is given for faculty development program, maybe for PhD students or maybe for faculties, or DAST is given for publication grant for publishing your work as a book, as a reference book. So this is all about the grant opportunities available by the, you know, grant opportunities available in ICSR for faculties, for researchers. If you have any question or doubt, you can ask me. Now it is time for discussion. Uh, yeah, Ashu, uh, you can ask the question. You can unmute and ask the question. Thank you so much, Himanshu, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Very informative session. We all thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and we are feeling blessed, you know, to uh, witness you live through the other side of the screen. So, what are the things you or your selection committee is looking for for giving us a grant? For example, if I'm looking forward to apply for minor or the major project, what are the key things which I should keep in mind so that there are maximum chances? Okay. Uh, first, you know, first thing is, you know, is the quality of your research proposal. How you have written the proposal, right? How you have written the proposal that I'm going to cover in the second lecture, right? How you have to uh, write the research proposal. So that is the most important thing, you know. It is not important that how you cook or how I cook. Rather, it is important how we present that food item, right? And that is where you need to write the research proposal in a proper format about which I'm going to uh, tell that in the second lecture. So basically this, this is the quality of the research proposal that is looked after. And you know, whether that research paper is based, you know, research proposal is basically on a very traditional topic on a very critical area. I said important, you know, multidisciplinary, you know, it is a transdisciplinary, you know, either, you know, you have sufficient publications to support that area, you know, your expertise in that area. So these are the things, you know, how you write, what is the research topic, what is your background, whether you have sufficient publications to uh, support that background. So these are the basic things that is looked for, you know, selection or during minor or major research proposal. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, Dr. You can unmute and ask the question. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. Very, very fruitful session, sir. We enjoyed a lot. Uh, sir, I want to ask the question. Uh, how can I use transdisciplinary research uh, approach on the impact of COVID-19 on the education of rural students, uh, basically government school, school students, children? You, you know, it's a very good topic. You know, you can have a colleague from psychology. The, what, is, what is the kind of trauma? What is the kind of mental problem the students are facing in that rural area? Somebody, you know, somebody's parents might have died. Right. Or somebody's uh, job has gone, you know, because of unemployment, because of financial crisis, what kind of trauma the children are facing? You know, you can have a faculty from psychology, you can have a faculty from sociology, you can a faculty from political science to look after the government response to the, those children. You no, know, so you can have a medical med, medical science, you know, uh, person or you have a doctor in the team so that, you know, he is in a position to know what kind of mental trauma the students are facing. So it's a truly transdisciplinary topic and you can have a different researchers from different disciplinary background to cover the problem of students in the rural area. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Any other question? Oh, should we read the questions from question and answer session? Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, sir, my question is. Batai. My question is, uh, what are the uh, grant availability for uh, physical disabled uh, researchers? Sabhi grant jitna hota hai, sab ke liye. Physically jo disabled hai, disabled word ta hum use nahi karte, hum kehte hain differently abled. Yes, yes, yes. Jitne saare grants bata hai, sabhi jo hai apply kar sakte hain. Any any special any special uh, uh, grant they is available for special weightage. They are given special weightage during selection if they are from differently abled category. But sir, I checked on UGC uh, grant uh, sections. There is a no uh, specialized. Uh, they are given for differently abled people. No, that is the instruction is given to the subject experts during selection as per the government rule. Although they have not officially written it, but this is like SCST. I said you know SCST. Uh, are given weightage during selection as per the government rule and in so also the different label people they also get special weightage during selection as per the government of rule it's not a funding council rule it is the government of india rule they follow because they are funded by the government okay thank you sir any other question sir i want to ask uh, what is the criteria for selection if i want to collect data from foreign country no criteria. No, your study should be such that you need to travel to a foreign country to to collect data. You know, you have to justify that during this online, you know, program when everything is available online. Why you need to go to a foreign country for collecting data? That you have to justify. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Or any question? Uh, sir, good morning, sir. So, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are already. Uh, sir, so it, it, uh, in, during, during the start of the session, you discuss about this international collaboration technique or method. Mm -hmm. So, sir, if somebody is applying for international collaboration, is it important that he should he or she should have gone through minor, major, and collaboration? Collaborating? No, no, not or, necessary. No, not necessary. If you are working on a topic and you know somebody from America, somebody from Europe, somebody from Asia. Yes, yeah, you know they are also working on the same topic you can just email them and uh, you know have them in the research team for applying for a you know in, international collaborative research project okay sir also sir like i am a postgraduate st student i am pursuing llm now and mm -hmm. i have not entered the research properly as such but mm -hmm. then if we if we want to become research scholar in future what could be the possible matter manners in which we can arrange our research work or let's say start writing research proposal or in I would suggest you, yes i got your question i would suggest yes. you to first do your phd because without phd you will not be taken seriously as a researcher you know phd the art of training in the world of research unless you are trained in the art of research how can you do research you got my point so you do you are doing llm it's fine but i would suggest you to do that you know, PhD after you complete your LLM. And once you are trained in the art of research, you are, you know, the area of research will be open for you. 
the world of research will be open for you right thank you so much sir okay. so if somebody is pursuing phd in that situation so you will apply for phd fellowship doctoral fellowship i said okay thank you sir you have to first i said you should be trained in the art of research जब तक आप रिसर्च के एरिया में ट्रेन नहीं हो तो आप कैसे रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट कर सकते हो सो मींस कि द पर्सन हु इज हैविंग मोर एक्सपीरियंस दे विल गिवन प्रेफरेंस इट्स नॉट अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ हैविंग मोर एक्सपीरियंस और लेस क्वेश्चन एंड लेस एक्सपीरियंस इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ व्हेदर यू आर ट्रेंड इन द आर्ट ऑफ रिसर्च एंड नॉट एंड दैट ट्रेनिंग इज गिवन ड्यूरिंग द पीएचडी टाइम एंड सर द पर्सन हु इज परसुइंग पीएचडी they are also getting the training but the person who has completed their phd they must be having more experience definitely so in that situation they will be given preference definitely so that's why i said minimum eligibility for applying for any scheme is phd awarded not phd pursuing okay sir okay oh, thank you sir any other question या कुछ ज्यादा क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछ रहे क्या इसका मतलब या तो पूरी तरह मुझे समझ में मतलब मैंने जो कुछ कहा पूरी तरह समझ में आ गया या तो किसी को कुछ नहीं समझ में आया नो नो सर सर द सेशन वाज रियली ग्रेट सर एंड आई कैन रीड द कमेंट्स आल्सो सर मोस्ट ऑफ द स्पीकर्स दे वर वेरी हेल्प बाय द सेशन सर एंड दे लाइक योर सेशन वेरी मच सर यू द वे यू एक्सप्लेन द थिंग्स इट वाज वेरी सिंपल एंड इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड सर बट आई प्रॉमिस दैट माय सेकंड लेक्चर वुड बी मोर फ्रूटफुल देन द फर्स्ट वन Surely, sir, we'll be looking forward to it, sir. Just a small request, sir, if uh, uh, you can get the PPT of the second lecture. I will, I will send the PPT to yes. Dr. Harik, and you can yes, share that sir. to the participants. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sir, uh, and really, once again, thanks, thanks a lot, sir, for this uh, wonderful, insightful session, sir. The way you explained the things was very simple and easy to understand, sir. And it was great to hear you, sir. And we'll uh, look for. We are looking forward for the second session, sir. Thank you. So, what will be the uh, break time? How much time is the break? So it's ten uh, minutes. Okay. So I think we'll join exactly at twelve o'clock. That will be fine. Yes, sir. Yes, we sir. Eight minutes, and I don't feel I need more than five minute break. So just you know, <laughs> we will join again. We join. At uh, sir, sir, at better better give fifteen minutes because it's a break to be required. No problem. It is up to you. I myself, I mean, I am not existed. So the speaker is not existed. So Pradeep, please uh, start at twelve fifteen. Better. Better, sir. Better because uh, we need it. Yes. We need it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the next session will start at twelve fifteen. Uh, the feedback form for this particular session is given in the chat box. I am ending the meet for the purpose of getting the records from the Google. Then I will again activate this link for the next session, which is on how to write a research proposal. At twelve, uh, I will activate the link, and by twelve fifteen, we will start the session. Great, good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank sir. you so much, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Rakesh, sir, next session is going to be moderated by you. uh kindly join uh, by 12:10 yeah aditi right okay thank you sir in the meantime participants please fill the feedback form for this particular session and join us for the next session by 12:15 <laughs>